morning, Life Point Church. Uh, welcome back to our second day. Um, this week we're talking about your God-given promise, and we're focusing on the tribe of Dan this week. And yesterday we talked a little bit about their leader, Joshua, and his frustration with Israel, and with Dan even in particular, on not moving on the promise that God had given them. Um, they were able to attain some success, and they kind of got complacent in that. Um, but Joshua was pushing them to go towards their full potential, their, their full promise. <clears throat> Dan's promise um, is described to us in Joshua, and we see that it was a vast um, land that they were promised. It was bordered on the west by the Mediterranean and extended north to jo Joppa near the boundaries of the tribe of Manasseh. They shared the eastern border with Ephraim and Benjamin, while Judah extended to the southeast. Their trouble, though, was on the southwest. They shared a border on the southwest with the Philistine nation, and we know that this was a, um, a country that was a pagan nation, and their people had always given God problems. And Dan wasn't supposed to be complacent in living in their success next to their enemy, but they were called to defeat their enemy and to take the land. <clears throat> and so we, we wonder why Dan wouldn't move on their enemy. Were they just uh, being lazy? Well, did they not have the strength? Did they not have the capabilities to go forth and to wage war and to take the land? Well, we knew that God was always on their side and he would give them great victories already. Uh, the book of Numbers gives us um, insight to the tribe of Dan, and it says that they had 64,400 men um, that were of fighting age at that time. <clears throat> Considering that, they were the second largest um, fighting force, um, I think right behind Judah, and they certainly had the potential to take the promise, but they didn't move on it. <clears throat> so we talk about uh, Dan's potential. Um, considering all this, uh, Moses even um, gave a prophecy, and he, he said in the book of Deuteronomy um, that Dan is a lion's whelp, and he shall leap from Bashan. So um, even Moses had this insight that the tribe of Dan would have great potential um, to do mighty things. And <clears throat> uh, we see that um, interpreting Moses' prophecy, Dan was seen as a lion's whelp or a lion's cub that had great potential to, to grow and to do good things or great things, um, being compared to a lion, um, but Dan didn't really move on that power. power. When we think about um, Moses uh, compared to Dan, let's think about our lives for a second. Moses, um, in that time, if Dan had a pastor, uh, Dan would have called Moses their pastor. And it's just intriguing because Moses saw this great potential in Dan. And sometimes or most of the time, our pastor sees that potential in us also. I mean, sometimes I think about the preaching that goes over the pulpit from uh, Pastor Gillis, and I'm inspired by that because he sees great things in all of us, and he tells us that we can do great things, that that the, the promises of our church are, are great, and um, the, the promises that we're going after. And sometimes it's hard to believe, but the pastors in our lives, um, our pastor, can see our potential and tells us of that. And Moses did that for Dan also. <clears throat> now it wasn't just uh, Pastor Moses that saw the potential in Dan. But um, even Dan's father and uh, his mother uh, saw his potential. Sister Erica taught us last week um, about Dan's father saying that he would become a tribe of Israel. And he, he knew and saw that potential in Dan. And also just the naming of Dan um, to mean judge. That he would become a judge over Israel. So Dan had great, great potential, and uh, he, he would grow and do great things if Dan would move, the tribe of Dan would move on God's promises, and that's where that tribe bogged down and didn't go after the full promise of God. So right now, let's think about our potential and the potential of our church. And if, if you don't know, you've got great potential to do big things. And this church is going to do great and big things, but we have got to move on God's promise. If there's ever a time where the church can get bogged down and be complacent, it's probably now. Because everything's changing, things are different, people can't come to church, we can't assemble. How we used, we're used to assembling, everything feels a little different, feels a little weird. So why don't we just lay low and try to get through this together? And then when everything gets back to normal, then we can move on to God's, God's promises, right? 
But now is not the time to lay low. Now is the time, even though things are changing, that we need to get together. We need to move on what God has called us to move on, even if it's different, even if it's harder. We have got to try to do, do this together. And this lesson speaks to me also, and it makes me evaluate where I am right now with my family, where I am in the church, and, and just to know that, well, God still sees potential in us. It's still being preached to us. It's being prophesied at us, and we've got to move together as a church. Let's think about that today. Thank you so much for joining me today. Remember to come back tomorrow for day three of our lesson.